Welcome back to the Mountain Morning Show. I'm really excited this morning to be talking about stem cells therapy. I have Bill Simikowski with me. How are you? Fine, thank you. I'm, I'm really interested in this because we're going to talk about where stem cells come from. And I, as I'm pregnant, I'm very interested in this topic right this sure. minute. I have a few weeks to figure out what I want to do about this, but let's talk about stem cell therapy real okay, fast. Okay, well, um, interesting, interestingly enough, we were just talking about um, whether you were going to freeze your uh, umbilical cord or placenta, mm -hmm. because now we can take uh, stem cells from the amni amniotic membrane, the placenta, and the umbilical cord, and we can use it in clinical applications to heal ailing tissue. And when I say heal, heal ailing tissue, I have a clinic called Utah Stem Cells Joint Treatment and Wellness Center. I'm located right now in the uh, Westgate Resort in Park City. Uh, and what we do in, in the clinic is we use stem cells to treat joints. Uh, we also use it for some other things that I'll talk about. But let me talk specifically about the joints. When someone has an ailing joint, whether it's arthritis in the knees, or if you have a torn rotator cuff, that's torn tendons. Uh, even if you sprain your ankle, that's a torn ligament. What your body's trying to do is heal it on its own, and it sends platelets that have growth and healing factors and also stops the bleeding initially, if it's an acute injury, and then also sends stem cells to actually turn into new healthy tissue, whatever the body requires. So the stem cells are like a blank card or a joker card in a deck of cards. It can become any cell in the body. And they're just waiting to get the order from its brain. Exactly. To so send off and recover something. Your body has, stores them in, the, in your fat and in your bone marrow. And when you have an injury, your body will send a signal to the stem cells to come and repair it. So if you cut your skin, the stem cells come and will turn into new skin when they arrive. In the case of arthritis, that's a wearing and tearing down of the cartilage. Your body just doesn't send enough stem cells to keep up with the damage. So what I do is I inject directly into the joints, tendons, ligaments, whatever we're treating. For the knees, we also have menisci, we, there's labrum in the hips and the shoulder. And I directly place right where they're needed thousands of times more stem cells than what your body will send in. I also use platelet-rich plasma that we get directly from you. The stem cells are coming from a live, healthy birth. These are not coming from aborted fetuses. That's where embryonic stem cells come from. And that probably held up a lot of the science and the advancement of the use of stem cells because right. there was an ethical concern of where we get stem cells. Totally. So initially we were using adult stem cells. We would get it directly from the patient, from your bone marrow adipose tissue. What kind of process is that? You know, there's a little bit of a procedure. It's about a 45 minute procedure. There's a little bit of pain involved and the, and the amount of stem cells you can receive is variable. Mm -hmm. um, it, it worked great, by the way, but that was about five, six years ago. Now we've learned that we can get it directly from the umbilical cord and from the placenta, and these are younger, more immature, more potent than your adult stem cell. We don't have to put you through the harvesting procedure. And then when I place them in the places where they're needed, in the joints, they, they have a much better chance of significantly making that tissue healthy and whole. And you don't have to have knee replacements or hip replacements anymore. It's very rare that anyone needs to do that when we use stem cells to actually repair the damage naturally the way the body was intended to be used. Couple questions. Sure. How widely available are stem cells now? Well, the, when I first started doing these procedures, it was about five, six years ago, I was the only medical doctor in the Utah area that was doing do these types of treatments. Really? I was a ski bum all my life. I had horrible knees. I was just looking for a solution to treat my own knees. And uh, when I learned about this treatment, um, then I, I got it. It was very miraculous. I, I, it helped regrow cartilage in my knees. I'm able to still ski and snowboard and do other things. And then I thought, well, I need to bring this to other patients. My, my original training was in emergency medicine and toxicology. Mm -hmm. And then I started doing more and more joint regeneration. Now I do that full time. There are new clinics popping up that are offering these treatments. And um, it's starting to, be, to, to get more notice. The science has always been there. The, the, uh, there's been plenty of level one studies, the best type of studies that show that this is beneficial and it works, but there weren't a lot of people uh, using these. Right. Um, but now we're using it to restore vision, we're using it to restore hearing, we're using it for heart failure, many different conditions. And even in my clinic where we do mostly joint regeneration, or that's how I got my start, we're now using it to treat erectile dysfunction. Mm -hmm. Many men over the age of 50 have some form of erectile dysfunction, and this is very beneficial for that. 
We can also treat women with urinary incontinence. After multiple childbirth, a lot of women get urinary incontinence. And um, they also lose sensation, so it's dif more difficult for them to reach orgasm or have better orgasms. We call that the O shot. We can treat women uh, f for that condition as with well. With stem cells. With stem cells. And we're also using it for some medical uh, aesthetic cosmetic procedures. We can do a breast lift with stem cells, non-surgical, all very natural. We can use it for facial treatments. We can do a micro needling with stem cells and platelet-rich plasma to improve the quality of the skin. And we can also achieve a facelift and restructure. Anything that you would use a filler for, we can now do naturally with PRP and stem cells. Wow. And it's more of a permanent solution. It doesn't wear off like a filler. Oh my gosh, okay, that is like a huge bonus because yep. when people get fillers, Botox are lasting, what, three to six months, right? Exactly, Botox lasts about three to six months, you're right, and fillers usually typically last about a year. But when we, when we do a, a medical aesthetics procedure using platelet-rich plasma and stem cells, we're actually making your body grow new collagen and new elastin, and we can structure, we can move the, the tissue that starts to sag mm -hmm. up, up high. It's all very natural, it looks exactly like you looked five, 10 years younger. So it's, it's, it's not like a surgical facelift, which is gonna alter your appearance. Right, interesting. Well, a couple more questions for you. Sure. When you inject stem cells, let's say in a, your knee joint, yes. how long should you be waiting to see some results? Okay, very good question. So it takes about five to six weeks to get about 80% of the improvement. So it doesn't take that long. Um, we ask patients to take it easy, um, not to overdo it, try to avoid those strenuous physical activities, but you can do all your normal activities. There's no downtime. The procedure takes about an hour. Um, it's not particularly painful. We have nitrous oxide available and we do numb up the skin where we inject. And then you have to be a little patient. At about the five week mark, you'll achieve about 70 to 80% of your improvement, but the stem cells have been shown to regenerate up to eight to 10 weeks later. So usually at the five to six week mark, I see you back. I do a follow up and see how you're doing. Um, for many people, it only requires one treatment and you're done. Wow. Uh, and if we do need to do another treatment, we usually do just platelet-rich plasma alone. It's a much reduced cost. It's very easy to do. And you could think of the platelet-rich plasma as adding a little more fertilizer to the lawn. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we have to do that, but only one or two treatments of that uh, when we need to do it. But about 60% of the time, I do one treatment and we're all finished. That's insane. So one of the biggest questions in my head, I'm not a scientific person, this may be a tough question, but how do you direct the stem cells to do what they're supposed to do? I mean, how do you inject into your knee and it repairs your knee and then inject into your face and give you a facelift? Well, the stem cells are just, they know, they're, they get a message from your body, whether they're a donor um, stem cell or your own stem cell. They know that if you have, a dam if you have damaged tissue, mm -hmm. um, the good Lord just puts stem cells in your body to turn into new healthy tissue. This is like so magic. <laughs> it is, you know, when I see people back after I've treated them and they've had pain for many years, some people have had very severe conditions, 20 years of pain. Um, they see me back at the five to six week mark and the types of things I hear is miraculous, amazing. And the, the stem cells are just very good at regenerating the body when I place thousands of times more potent stem cells and more of them than your own body sends in. And the results are very significant. And I can treat people of all ages and all severity of conditions. I treat plenty of people over the age of 80. But I also treat the young people, the 20 to 30 year olds that are very active, play a lot of sports, they have an acute injury, and they wanna get back to the playing field more quickly. Mm -hmm. And that's what professional athletes do now. Um, really, professional athletes really advance the science a lot because even 15 years ago, 20 years ago, when an athlete got hurt, they first were doing platelet-rich plasma injections, PRP. They wouldn't wait for the athlete to heal on his own. They would inject PRP into torn tendons, ligaments, things like that, just to speed up the process so they could get back to the playing field. Right. And that worked great for years until we learned that in addition to adding platelet-rich plasma, we can add stem cells. Now, instead of relying on your body's own stem cells, we place thousands of times more stem cells and people get back to the playing field even more quickly. Let's talk about some procedures. Sure. If you're doing your back or your knee, you said it's about an hour procedure. Is it a really deep injection? Are you getting local anesthetic? Are you going under? So I numb up the skin in uh, all the areas where I inject mm -hmm. with, a, with a little bit of lidocaine. And then I place a little bit larger needle with the solution and I'm tapping the tendons and ligaments to okay. where they're needed. 
And when I do that, I'm making a little bit of damage with the tip of the needle. And that stimulates the body to send more of your own platelets and stem cells. Also lets the stem cells know this is where it really needs the help. Mm -hmm. And then I also place it into joint spaces to regrow car cartilage. So I just do an intra-articular injection. It's not particularly painful. Um, there is some pain, but we also have nitrous oxide, which is the same laughing gas that dentists use. And most people can tolerate this very well. And they're able to walk out of the office. And this wow. takes about an hour to do one joint. This seems too easy. It does. And I wish more people knew about it. And that's really why I got into this is it's just changing medicine. So it's the greatest revolution, evolution in medicine um, in the last 50 years. A lot of people say that it's similar to antibiotics as far as the uh, breakthrough. Um, yeah, the breakthrough and, and how huge it is for medical science. All right, another question. This might sure. be taking us in a whole different direction. Okay. But do stem cells have a role in cancer cells? Good question. So the first thing I did when I started um, investigating stem cell use, not so much for the joints because that's been around for many years and it's shown to be helpful mm -hmm. and no problems. But then we also can do IV stem cell therapy to treat some systemic illnesses like Parkinson's, multiple sclerosis, dementia, autism, things like that. COPD is a big one, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. And the first thing I wanted to do as a toxicologist you know, a toxicologist deals with poisonings and any medicines, drugs entering the body. Um, we want to make sure it's safe, it's efficacious, and we need to know the mechanism of action. So the first thing I did was just to look at all the available literature to see, is, ha, is there any downside to using stem cells? Can it cause any damage? Can it cause cancer, for example? Can it cause abnormal tissue to grow? And the answer is no. There's been abundant science and literature that's totally made um, it easy for doctors to understand that stem cells are very safe. So it won't turn into any abnormal tissue, only healthy tissue. Then the next step is, is it actually efficacious? Before I bring it to any patients, I don't want to give any false hope. I don't right. want to take anyone's money if it's not likely to work. And once I've had a chance to vet each individual condition, then I've offered it to my patients. And we're now offering IV stem cell therapy to treat things like multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's, et cetera. Are there any limits to stem cells? Good question. Uh, there probably is. Um, it's, it's funny that when someone, in, through the years when I was doing joint regeneration, I used to get phone calls from people saying, can you treat Parkinson's? Can you treat these other things? And I, what I would tell them is, there are clinics offering those procedures, but I'm not doing it. I haven't had a chance to really look into it and do the research Yourself, and, yeah. myself, and I need to do it myself. And so, I took each person's name and the condition that they wanted treated, and I, I told them, when I've had a chance to research your condition, I'll get back to you. And it just turns out, just about every condition so far that I've researched, the literature has shown significant improvements in the symptoms using IV stem cells. So actually, I have not had to say for any condition that it's not useful this thus is so far. so interesting. Bill. Breakthrough for me. I'm like, my mind is blown. I don't know much about stem cells, and now after this interview, I feel very informed Great. and extremely interested, and I for sure will be keeping tabs on thank this you. throughout my life. Thank you very much, Kelly. Well, thank you for joining us this morning on the Mountain Morning pleasure. Show. My pleasure. All right, guys. Well, that's all we have for now for stem cells. I wish we could just talk about this for two hours, but that's all we have time for. We do have a lot more coming up on the Mountain Morning Show, though, so stay tuned.